here from high atop San Diego State, one of the buildings here at a weather station, is an aerial photograph. Let me show you where we are. They're doing mapping here and what have you. Right up in here. That's where we are right now. I'll tell you, my friends, and they can get a lot higher and get a lot closer to the ground. I want you to meet my man here, Dr. Sue. Hey, doctor. Hi. Nice to Again, you. besides being a weather station here, the yes. purpose of this is also to do a lot of mapping and yes. coordination, coordinates for mapping, yes. right? What are you trying to accomplish? I think in here we're trying to combine the modern technology with the GPS, GIS to provide a better services for our community and a better quality. A lot of it, like this example, like handheld devices, pocket PC, can have the, the remote sensing images and provide very unique information for the firefighter, police department for Homeland Security purpose. Okay, so this again, we're getting the, the GPS now yes. out of the car yes. into the palm of our hand yes. and being used by firefighters, by, by the Marines, the Navy, yes. the Air Force, yes. and Army, and other yes. people. And a lot of this studying is going on here. Let me show you yes. something they're, they're also working with here. This, you see, it's not a jugs gun, which they would use to monitor the speed of a fastball or a speedometer, a car speeding down the road. This is centigrade. In other words, it's telling somebody about body temperature. Let me see. My friend, you're dead. I had to inform oh you of this. But, but this is so interesting because you, you're a student here. What's your name? Actually, I'm a staff here. My name oh, is Pete you, Coulter. Really? What do you do here, Pete? Yes. Um, I manage projects. I operate some of the technical equipment. And what, this is a GPS behind us right here. Yeah, this is a survey grade GPS, and it works with all this equipment here. There's a receiver, base receiver here. This is a roving receiver, um, and there's this uh, radio that transmits data between the two. Um, this thing is actually accurate to one centimeter, and you can map your driveway. You can map... We've used it for vernal pools. For how for many miles from Earth? The satellite data comes from 22,000 kilometers above the Earth. And with very accurate clocks, it's able to use the time and measure a distance and get you to centimeter uh, precision on that. Wow. So in other words, you could read the eyes on a... On a, on a you could tell the color of somebody's eyes from 22,000 kilometers in space. Well, it's less of a visual. It's more of giving you a coordinate and telling you where you're at and where things are at and being able to the map the topography on the ground. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, folks. We see all of this up here and all the other many things and the equipment, the guy's working and all this going on. Doug Stowe, they also, we, we saw him earlier on KOSI, this, talking with us uh, in the geography department of the mapping and what have you. How important, this has got to be one of the most important things that can be done by a scientist is to have You've got to know the, the Marines and Navy and Army and all those people, they want positioning in the, within centimeters. That's right. Well, we know how much location matters for business and for other applications, and particularly for military applications. But in geography, location is one of the key parameters. Here you see uh, John Ryan is working with that digital imaging sensor. And here are the other equipment we have here, and this is what you're doing. is You're up here predominantly... That's working right. on trying to get maps made properly. That's correct. Yeah, we see some of our digital imaging equipment that's used on helicopters. We saw some of those images in the earlier segment this morning. Wow. And also some of the GPS, geographic information system integration here that Ming-Su has. Yeah, Dr. Su, what's really phenomenal about it all is the fact that we're doing it right here at little old San Diego State. Yeah, yes. So much going on here. Yes, yes. Actually, we are part of a, the Cal Alley Square Research Project, California Institute of Telecommunication. So we are doing some kind of research to facilitate, to provide a better quality of life for our people in here. Wow. Again, folks, San Diego State, it's the place. I call it the MIT of the West. You can, we got them young and old here. These aren't students. So you're, you're a professor here? I'm staff member. Staff John member. Kaiser. Hey, you're a student. I'm a student. Yeah. What do you think of all this? I mean, choosing San Diego State was the right idea for you, huh? Oh, yeah. What do you got there? This tells me the leaf area index. The what? Leaf area index. Leaf area index. You lost me. Is that like, I mean, about the size of a leaf from 20,000? No, miles? it's a. Uh, uh, <laughs> the amount of leaf area coverage on the ground. It, it's a biophysical measurement that we make using a spectral radiometer. Yeah, there you go. You got me good. I got that. A spectral radiometer and the leaf imagery. And I'll, yeah. Uh, they lost me, and I'll get out of here before we all get lost. But just do me a favor, folks. If you're thinking about going someplace, forget MIT, forget Stanford. Try SDSU. They do one heck of a job in this these sciences departments, believe me. Forget MIT? <laughs> How do you spell MIT? Stan, huh? I'm angry, guys. Right now, though, Stan, they have this. Uh, we have the GPS, the satellite, looking down at KUSI. Yes. And it's reading the mentality of right now all the people in the newsroom, total. 
and 50 is average. It's 49.31.46. As long as we're on the plus side. <laughs> we just about made it, man. Don got it. Uh. And let's go over to Channel 8. We might not be able to get a reading over there, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see, see you later. later. Right. Thanks, Rod. Yeah. Uh.